so sorry. So sorry. No, no problem. Can you hear me? Yeah, thank you. I, so I'm just putting the movie or the movie, the the stream up live on YouTube, and then we'll just get started. You look okay. fine. Look I well, I had my toque on. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, sorry about being late, guys. Uh, anyway, that's uh, yeah, my fault. I apologize. No worries. It's all good. Okay. So, Councillor uh, McLaughlin, uh, we're live. So, if you want to start the meeting. Okay. I guess we will call this uh, committee meeting of adjustment to order. And the first I item is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest? Seeing none. Then we'll proceed to 3.1. Okay, and I'll read the Karen, recommendation. Do we need to have a, a, do we need to approve the agenda? No. <laughs> okay, excuse me, then I'll move ahead to 3.1. Application for consent form, consent file number D10 uh, 162 to D10164. And Carmen, if you read the recommendation. Yeah. That the Committee of Adjustment for the Chanch Whitewater Region approve three consent applications, file D10162, D10163, and D10164 for the property described as part of lot one and two Westmeath concession front north D. Collange Lake Trail, subject to the conditions outlined in this report. Mover and a seconder. Okay, then we'll uh, move it. We'll maybe turn it over to Ivan for uh, information. Yeah, yeah, thanks so much, uh, Chair McLaughlin. Uh, so the present application pertains to the creation of two uh, residential properties, as well as a right of way to access those two properties, right away being a private road. Uh, the application is filed by, um, excuse me, Paul Gervais on behalf of Yves Procor and himself being Paul Gervais. Uh, property described uh, is over on the, if you will, the peninsula uh, where Greenway Drive is, Coulomb Lake Trail is. Uh, so the proposal is to create a right of way that would extend from Coulomb Lake Trail uh, into the property that is quite large. It's, it's, uh, it's about 135 acres currently. Uh, so the right of way would lead to these two properties and then would, would, uh, sort of, uh, uh, would sort of cut off so that it would provide for lot frontage for the two lots. So what's happening now is there's an existing park model trailer on the lot to the, to the top, to the north, and an existing cottage on the lot uh, to the south. So they're looking to divide these two properties uh, from the original holding. Uh, so lot sizes are quite large, five acres in size. Uh, the right of way would be more or less one and a half acres. Uh, so staff are generally supportive of the application. Uh, we do have some, some, uh, some, some recommended conditions, so I'll go through those now, uh, so that the applicant submits surveying to the township and to the county of Renfrew. And number three, that the owner enter into a development private road agreement, similar to what we'd see for other private roads. So this would be a new private road in the township. And that that agreement be registered on the title of the subject lands, uh, that the owner obtain a karst inspection. Uh, so this area of the township is known for having karsts. So he would uh, conduct a karst inspection with our, our CBO or our building services. Um, fifth, that the owner submit a wildland fire assessment and mitigation plan. So again, there's some wildland hazards in the area based on the composition of the trees. Uh, so the applicant has already filed that with us. It's currently going to be reviewed and, and considered for approval. Number six, that the applicant file and obtain an amendment to the zoning bylaw to allow for uh, a redu reduced setback to the adjacent lands that are that are have an aggregate designation. So similar to other applications that council has seen, one recently for Buchanan, the other one for Brazo. Uh, these lands are within the minimum separation distance of, of an existing aggregate zoning. Um, so as a result, they will have to file an amendment to reduce that separation distance. 
Uh, the owner has filed an aggregate impact assessment uh, to assess the impact of that aggregate with his severance application. So it is supporting the proposed zoning amendment. Um, seven, that the certificate of consent for the right-of-way be registered before the two lots. We don't want to create the two lots before the right-of-way because then they won't have frontage. So the road, the private road has lot has to be created first and then the other two lots. And number eight, that the applicant provide the approval authority with a transfer deed of land. So uh, there are a number of conditions. Generally, uh, there should be no issue in fulfilling them within a period of one year. So staff are supportive of this and uh, we're looking for the uh, council's uh, or committee rather support. Thanks so much. Okay, so now I'll ask for, is the uh, applicant uh, present, Carmen? Um, I'm, uh, I didn't, I'm not sure if yeah. uh, you're... Uh, well, I'll just note there's a few people that we don't see the video and we don't see their names. So if the applicant is present, feel free to unmute yourself and, and uh, voice any comments or, or questions that you have. Maybe we'll give it a few seconds and if nobody unmutes themselves, we'll progress to the next uh, next series of questions. I'll get handed back to you, Carmen. I'm not seeing yeah. anybody unmuting themselves and to the chair. Okay. So if we, we don't see anybody there, uh, does the committee have any questions? I oh yeah, I see none. You see none. I have one question, Ivan, and, and you were talking about the uh, the private road agreement. So, you does the road have to be built uh, before the severances uh, occur? I would say yes, because if the road is not constructed uh, prior to the severances, then they they don't legally have frontage on a private road. Um, in my conversations with Mr. Jerve, the road is generally up to our private road standard policy. Uh, so there are going to be some improvements, some tree cutting and some, some granular that needs to go down. But certainly uh, there, there, there should be no issue in improving that road uh, within the, the one year time that the file would lapse. Okay, so do we need to, to put that in the conditions, Ivan, or have you already looked after that? So that'll be part of the private road agreement. Uh, so it needs to be registered and then it, it will speak to having to construct the road prior to the issuance of the other certificates. Okay, that, that answers my question. I just wanted to make sure that it was done before the other part. If there's no other questions, then I will ask for a vote. All in favor? Carried. Thank you, Carmen. Okay, so then we'll move on to 3.2, application for consent file number D10-165. Carmen, would you read uh, recommendation the, uh, That the Committee of Adjustment for the Township of Whitewater Region approve a consent application D10-165 for the property described as part of lot six Westmeath concession to CLF Bromley line subject to the conditions outlined in this report. Mover and a seconder. Carmen's nodding your head. So yeah. then we will turn it over to Ivan. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, so the present application is submitted by Merlin Martin and Alice, Alice and Anita Martin. Uh, the proposal here is to create a new vacant residential lot having an area of uh, 1.58 acres uh, that would front on Bromley line. So the Martins own a property currently uh, more or less 98 and a half acres and they're looking to sever off uh, a residential lot to build a single family home. Uh, property is appropriately, appropriately sized to provide for individuals uh, water and sewage services and again will front on a, on a municipal road. A uh, few key things here is this area of Westmeath again is known as having karst topography and as a result the staff will be re recommending a condition relating to a karst inspection. Uh, secondly, the applicant has filed MDS, minimum distance separation forms, for all the adjacent barns within 750 meters. So that was all done before they applied, which is great. Uh, I've been able to uh, do the calculations and confirm that this new lot and the future dwelling will, will conform with the minimum distance separation of Omafra. 
Uh, just moving straight down into the conditions. So again, conditions one and two, that's surveying and be prepared and submitted to the township and county. Number three, relating to road widening, so that the Ontario Land Sur Surveyor confirm that the road width is 20 meters, and in the case where it's not, that a portion of land be transferred to the township. Uh, number four, that the applicant obtain a karst inspection through our chief building official or building services. And number five, that the applicant uh, provide the approval authority with a transfer deed of land uh, for the severed part. So pretty straightforward severance, uh, and staff are supportive. Thanks. Uh, once again, Carmen, is the applicant uh, present? If, um, again, there's a couple people that don't have their names on. So if this is your application, if you'd like to mute, if you have anything to say, and I'll give you a couple moments. I don't think so, Chair. Okay, then I'll uh, ask uh, the committee if they have any questions. Uh, Council Mackay. Yeah, is that Sorry. agricultural land? So the the property is being used for agricultural purposes. Uh, it's currently within a rural designation in the county official plan, and it's uh, it's also located within a rural zone in the Westmead zoning bylaw. So this particular area of the township is kind of in a non-decision area. So uh, as part of OPA 11 that was filed uh, a couple of years ago, or in fact, a number of years ago, uh, there was a partial decision made. Uh, the the, there were decisions made on a variety of things. What was outstanding was the redesignation of certain lands from rural to agriculture and from, uh, from other designations to mineral aggregate. So these lands fall within that non-decision area. So they are destined perhaps if the province would make finally make a decision on, on the matter, but they haven't. Uh, so as a result, we would consider this a currently rural designation and the policies relating to severances uh, for rural designations apply. So the official plan generally supports severances in the rural designation. Uh, so that does that kind of answer the question, uh, uh, Councilor McKay? Well, it must be rougher land. It's not pure. There's a lot of but, rock cuts along that road. I'm not sure what, right where this is, but well, um, this might be on the peripheral uh, periphery of the good class lands. But uh, but again, nothing would. There's no policies in place currently that would prohibit us from supporting a, a severance application here. Okay, good enough. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments, Carmen? Or questions from council? No, I see none. Okay, because my, my question has been answered. Uh, then I will call for a vote. All in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you, Carmen. We'll move on to 3.3. .3, application for consent. File number D. 10-166. And Carmen, would you read the uh, comments? Yep. Uh, that the Committee of Adjustment for the Township of Whitewater Region approved consent application D-10-166 for the property described as part of Lot 1, Ross, Concession 3, sign line subject to the conditions outlined in this report. Mover and your seconder. Yep. Councilor McKay, Councilor Nickel, uh, sorry, uh, well, who are you, Olmstead? Councillor Olmstead. <laughs> all right. All good, Carmen? Okay. Then I'll turn it over to Ivan for some discussion. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, so the present application is intended to extend an existing private right-of-way, an easement, not a private road. It's just an easement. So essentially... Um, there's a property, a back lot, we might want to call it, um, that has no frontage uh, on a municipal road. And they filed for an application back in 1996. You see the green portion on the map? So back in 1996, they, uh, the county at the time approved an easement to access the back lot that has no frontage. But when they created the easement, it wasn't long enough to actually reach the property. So what they're doing now is the yellow portion, um, they're applying to extend that easement to actually reach the said property. 
And uh, so the, the proposal here is to, to extend that private right of way easement uh, to, the, to the said land. So the applications filed by, uh, by, uh, by Norman and Sylvia Crane on behalf of Keith and Sarah Johnson, the property is owned by Keith and Sarah and Norma, Norman and Sylvia Crane, they, own, they currently own the back, back property. Council or the committee members may remember uh, this, I think it was last spring, we had a zoning amendment that was filed by Norman and Sylvia, and it was to allow for a single a permanent dwelling on that back lot and council refused the application uh, because it didn't have direct frontage on a municipal road. Uh, so this is the same sort, an application, if you will, to extend an e easement to that particular <coughs> property. Um, staff are supportive of this. I mean, it'll provide for the proper access uh, to the said back lot. Uh, it won't change the fact that they cannot build a permanent dwelling on that back lot but it'll certainly provide legal access to it or correct a deficiency that was done in the, in, in the past. Uh, so staff uh, will require as a, or recommend as condition that surveying be submitted uh, for that, that additional parcel. And thirdly, that the applicant provide the approval authority to transfer deed of land. So uh, that pretty well sums it up. If there's any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Thanks so much. Okay. Uh, you see nobody, Carmen, to speak on this item. If anybody would like to say anything, if you want to unmute yourself. No, I'm not seeing anybody. Okay, thank you. Any any uh, comments from the, or questions from the committee? No, I see none. Okay, I, I just have one. Carmen uh, and Ivan can quickly straighten out, but why is, is the extension the yellow part? Is that correct? That's or is correct, that yes. the lot? The, the, yellow is is the, the yellow is the extension. The lot is not in fact shown on, well, it's shown on this map, but just a portion of it. It's like a 50 acre parcel. Okay. At okay. the back. But, but my yeah. question, Ivan, is why is, the yellow portion wider than the uh, the original uh, section. Yeah, so it traverses a bit of a ravine through there. So there's a water course that cuts through the lot, and as a result, the roads kind of it 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 kind of taking a turn. A bit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, that that answer. I just look at it and go. Oh, I don't don't quite understand, but we got to go around the water courses so that yeah, that makes total sense. So that answers my question. And if there's no other questions, I will ask for a vote. All in favor? Carried. Carried. Thank you, Carmen. We'll move on to uh, 3.4, which is application for consent file number D 10 167. And Carmen, would you read the uh, comments? That the Committee of Adjustment for the Township of Whitewater Region approved consent application D10-167 for the property described as part of lot 9, West Meath, concession 3, east of Muskrat Lake, Zion Line, subject to the conditions outlined in this report. And do we have a mover and a seconder, Carmen? Yes, uh, Dave McKay and Chris second. Yep, good. Okay. Thank you. Then Ivan, could you give us an update, please? Yeah. So the application submitted by Jean-Pierre Quintel of the Lavignier Law Professional Corporation on behalf of Dean and Diana Termarsh. They're the owners of the property. What they're seeking to do is create a new lot that is, or essentially split the lots into two, um, each having more or less 10 and a half hectares or 26 <laughs> acres. Uh, the retained land currently has a dwelling located on it, and it's kind of located more in the center of the property. And the retain the the severed parcel um, would be sort of an L-shaped property, uh, with both properties fronting on Zion Line and having sufficient frontage and lot area. So a few things to note here is that the property, the severed property. Um, is mostly in the rural designation. There are some minor portions within the mineral aggregate designation. Um, well, typically we would require uh, some changes to 
or some uh, 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 aggregate impact assessment to support an application due to the minor nature of the designation. Uh, staff are not recommending that an assessment be completed. Uh, we don't anticipate that this severance will affect the future extraction of the aggregate off site to the north. So it's part of a larger aggregate area. Uh, just to the north at Sturgeon Mountain and Zion Line, there's a pit there that's, uh, that, that's currently uh, licensed. Uh, secondly, the property directly to the south, um, which is about a hundred acre property, it is currently uh, has a license for hauled sewage spreading. Uh, so generally what happens is that you're not permitted to build a dwelling, well, not generally, the zoning bylaw specifically outlines that you're not allowed to have a dwelling within 200 meters of a licensed facility. Um, so I did discuss that with Dean and uh, he's generally acceptable. He understands that that provision exists and he understands that uh, for a big portion of the severed lot uh, there, it has no development potential. At the back corner of the L shape, there is an area that's outside the 200 meters. So if ever a house was to be built on that L shaped property, then it would have to go at the back end and he's aware of that and, uh, and, and, and has confirmed his acknowledgement of that. And the last thing to note, I, I, I guess, is the shape of the lot. So generally in land use planning, L-shaped lots are generally not supported um, just because they uh, generally, in most cases in the future, there, there may prove to be some issues uh, of compatibility or, or just issues between landowners because one guy would be residing behind the other. Uh, in this case, there is an ample amount of bush cover between the two lots. So we don't anticipate that, that there's gonna be any uh, major impacts to the, to the two landowners if ever they're sold off to, to separate people. Uh, so we're, we're supportive of that shape in this particular case. Uh, so moving forward to the conditions, uh, again, pretty straightforward. Conditions one and two, that surveying be submitted to the township and county. Uh, number three, that the owner determine the width of the road along Zion line and where, in which case, if it's not wide enough, they transfer to the township. And number four, uh, that the applicant uh, provide to the approval authority that land, uh, the, the transfer deed of land. Maybe one last thing I will note is that while the property to the south is licensed today, um, if that license was ever, uh, was ever, I guess for lack of a better term, dropped or, or if they decided not to renew that license, then the 200 meter setback would no longer apply. So then they could build closer to the road or closer to that to that adjacent land. So uh, staff are supportive of this, um, and uh, the owners are well aware of the constraints uh, relating to the hauled sewage site. That's it for me. Thanks so much. Any questions from council? Or is the applicant uh, Carmen? Do you know if uh, the applicant is in I the audience? So somebody yes. actually, Oh, go yeah, ahead. Actually, it's Dean. I'm here. If, okay. If you got any questions, do, Dean, do you have any Do you have anything to add to this? Uh, no, I think Ivan did a good job of explaining everything. Okay, then thank you. Um, then our last uh, council, if there the committee, if there's any questions from the committee. I don't see any. Don't see any, Carmen. I, I only have one to Ivan. Uh, you were I, talking about, pardon? Um, that was my chair squeaking, I apologize. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, I just, Ivan, where you say that uh, Dean understands where the house, will that be registered on the property? So the answer to that is no. I was considering a development agreement perhaps as a, as a recommended condition. However, there's really no point in doing that because the bylaw applies. So it's a bylaw by, approved by council. Uh, the bylaw exists and it, it will have to be met. So in the case where uh, the owners would sell the property, it'll be the due diligence of the, of the, uh, of the purchasing lawyer to inform themselves of the zoning bylaw, and in most cases, the lawyers get that information, and we would we would advise them through a compliance report that this requirement exists. 
Uh, so staff didn't feel that there would be a need to rec register an agreement or register a notice on the title of the property for the improvement. No, that, that, that answers my concerns. Uh, that that's all I'm thinking. I, I realize Dean understands it, just that if there's a, a next person, uh, then as long as it, that that is covered, I, I'm fine with this. So, any other comments or questions from council? Seeing none or hearing none, uh, I will call for a vote. All in favor? Carried. Carrie, thank you, Carmen. Okay, we'll move on then. Thank, thank you, Dean. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll move on to uh, application of consent file. Oh, this is 3.5 application for consent file number D10168. Carmen. Uh, yes, and the recommendation is that the Committee of Adjustment for the Township of Whitewater Region approve consent file D10-168 for the property described as part of lot to Westmeath concession to west of Muskrat Lake Russell Trail, subject to the conditions outlined in this report. And you have a mover and a second here, Carmen? I do. Yes, I do. You do? Okay, yeah. then uh, I will turn it over to Ivan. Yeah, maybe I'll just note uh, for you, Clerk Miller, that we're not, you're not sharing the reports anymore. I'm not sure if that's the intent, if it's the intent, but uh, certainly they got removed at some point in time before the last report, but I'll, I'll proceed here. Um, so the present application is submitted uh, by Barry and Carolyn Curtis. I believe we have a Carolyn or Caroline with us today, which is good. She's not in her head, which is great. Uh, so the application is filed on behalf of Melvin Weber. Melvin Weber is the, the property owner currently and, uh, and Barry and Caroline are looking to purchase this land. Uh, what they're seeking to do is a lot addition. So a lot addition at the back of their waterfront property. Uh, the lot addition would have dimensions of 20 by 15.25 meters or 304 square meters. And the intended pur purpose for this addition is for parking and perhaps maybe for an accessory building in the future. Um, so essentially the proposed lot addition uh, will support general servicing for the property. Uh, these properties on the waterfront are generally small in nature, usually more or less an acre or uh, more or less an acre. Uh, so additional land always helps in uh, providing on-site private services. Um, a few things to note, not too much. Uh, so Carolyn has been working with the ad adjacent waterfront property owners, I will note. So in my conversations with the, the applicants, they were seeking to see, they were trying to see if other property owners were looking to do this, uh, to add land um, to their properties. Um, some of them did show some interest, others didn't. Uh, generally, you don't wanna have just this one little lot sticking out out of, out of nowhere, but, uh, but um, certainly if I would anticipate that if this gets approved and, and is successful, uh, we may see other applications from ad other, other adjacent waterfront property owners. Another thing to note is the Rossell Trail. It's a private road. It will traverse uh, the severed parcel. Um, so it will be a requirement uh, that the, uh, as part of the transfer of land that no uh, encumbrance uh, be created over the private road. The private road it was surveyed some number of years ago and it'll be shown again on the on the revised on the new survey of the severed property. So uh, we'll ensure that uh, access over that strip of land uh, is maintained uh, for the adjacent landowner. Um, I think that pretty well covers it. Uh, I will note that it fronts on Muskrat Lake. Muskrat Lake's an at capacity lake has sensitivity issues. Uh, since no you know, major development is being proposed here. We, we typically, in some cases, require a water quality uh, impact assessment, and that will be looked at in another application further on in the agenda and will be required. But in this case, because it's just a lot of addition, uh, maybe there'll be a small structure on it. Uh, staff aren't recommending that that uh, water quality impact assessment be, be, uh, be a condition in this case. Uh, so just to conclude, uh, two recommended conditions pertaining to surveying. So uh, surveying be submitted to the township and County. So staff are supportive, subject to those conditions. Thanks so much. Okay, uh, you said the applicant is in the audience. Uh, do they have anything to add to Ivan's report? 
She, no. She, she, no, she, she, <laughs> yeah, she said. So, okay. Uh, if she's happy with it, then I will ask for any comments from council or, or from committee. Yeah, um, Councillor Mackay. Go ahead, Councillor Mackay. Okay, uh, that's in pretty prime agricultural land back there, isn't it? Ivan? Yeah, so so essentially the, the portion of land, so the, the portion that's being severed and even beyond the severed property is designated waterfront. Uh, the rest of the land, the retain, the majority of the retained lands are agriculturally designated. Um, so, I mean, the size of the lot is 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 considerate of the loss of a small portion of agricultural land or the land that's being used for agricultural purposes. Uh, but again, it's not designated as agriculture. It's in a waterfront vicinity zone and and within a waterfront designation as well. Yeah, but as soon as you put one in, everybody will want one. And that eats into our farmland. Don't forget, we lose 175 acres a day, and uh, I, I don't, I don't agree with it. Sorry. Yeah, maybe if I could just make one one point is, um, and again, uh, so I guess this is kind of creating, for lack of a better term, a precedent for this area. So um, basically, they've chose a depth. Of, uh, of 30 meters or rather 15 meters. So any other adjacent applications, we wouldn't wanna see them all skewed. We'd wanna see them all the same. So uh, the depth, I don't anticipate any future applications being any deeper, uh, but again, uh, but again, uh, I understand your, your comments, uh, Councilor McKay. Okay, uh, any other uh, comments from the committee? Oh, Councillor Olmstead. Yeah, um, can you hear me there, Adjai? Yes, go ahead. We're good, yeah. Okay. Um, Ivan, so just, just to clarify, so that the area that um, that is being severed uh, in green, so that currently is a designated waterfront? That's correct. So in the official plan, it's, it's within the waterfront designation and within our zoning, it's within a waterfront vicinity zone. Okay, and so how, um, how how far back would it be considered waterfront? Like, is there is there a border beyond that? Uh, I would say it, pro it probably extends probably a, from the water's edge. Well, from the road that's there today, probably extends maybe about sixty meters, and there this application is cutting into fifteen meters of that sixty meters, if you will. Okay. Great, thank you. I support the application, thank you. So, uh, but yeah, my comment was the same as Councillor Olmsted. Uh, I wanted to make sure that it was within the water uh, waterfront vicinity. Uh, so uh, I guess we will call for a vote uh, on this. Um, Carmen, can you uh, get a vote? Do you want, yeah, like a recorded vote or just, it, does you guys want to raise your hand if um, uh, I, will, favor? I will break, I'll break the vote if it yeah. needs to be broken. Carmen. Yeah. So all in favor? And uh, we need a tiebreaker. So uh, Council yeah. Olmstead support. I, I'm in favor. So it's carried. Carried. Thanks, Carmen. But I would like Councillor uh, Mackay's uh, comments noted. Okay. Okay. So then we will move on to six point, um, six point seven, Carmen, or six point six, six point six, or three point six. I'll get it straight. Three point six consent application files. Number D ten one sixty nine, and Kerman, would you? Uh, okay, yep. mind the committee of sorry, yeah. Uh, 
that the Committee of Adjustment for the Township of Whitewater Region approved consent application D-10-169 for the property described as part of Lot 3, Ross Concession, 1, east of Muskrat Lake, Cedar Haven Road, subject to the conditions outlined in this report. Mover and a seconder. Councillor Mackay, Councillor Olmsted. Okay, and then I will uh, <clears throat> ask for Ivan for an update. Yeah, so this application is submitted by Constance McNeil and uh, on behalf of herself and Ronald McNeil, we do have Connie McNeil with us, Constance Connie, uh, with us today. Uh, so the proposal is to sever a new vacant residential lot, waterfront residential lot on Muskrat Lake. Uh, this would be the first lot created from since the from the original holding in seven, 1971. Uh, the application is also a resubmission of a former application from 2007 that never got to, that never got completed. So the file lapsed, and the application is identical to the previous one. Uh, proposal is to create uh, two equally uh, sized properties at 4.8 acres, uh, which will provide sufficient uh, area to provide for uh, private on-site services. Uh, skipping over to the provisions of the official plan. So the property is located within the rural exception to land use designation. Uh, so that uh, rural or waterfront designation around Muskrat Lake uh, applies. In this particular case, because the new vacant lot will ultimately be developed with a single family home and, and a septic system and a well, and maybe accessory structures, uh, the official plan uh, does uh, allow for the township to require what's called a water quality impact assessment. Um, what that is, and council will be somewhat familiar with this, is more recently, back in December, uh, basically what happens is, uh, they need to use a certain type of soil. Among other things, one thing is they need to use a certain type of soil for the new septic system. Uh, so we determined through some soil sampling that that's, that soil is available within the, within the township. So the water quality impact assessment will have to speak to that, among other things. Uh, so that's one of the recommended conditions. Um, the other one item is uh, there is a significant value land. So there's a water course that traverses the properties. Uh, but due to the nature of the of the size of the lot at 4.8 acres, so there's not reoccurring natural environmental areas. It's just the one water course, uh, including plus the lake. Uh, the lot's so large; it's 4.8 acres. There's sufficient area to uh, meet the water setback from that water course of uh, of uh, 30 meters. Uh, so therefore, the staff are not recommending an environmental impact for this particular application. Uh, so moving down to the conditions. Um, so numbers one and two, that survey be submitted to the township and county. Number three, that the surveyor determine the road width along Cedar Haven Road uh, and transfer land to the township if necessary. Number four, that the, the owner provide a water quality impact assessment and monitoring program to the township prepared by a professional. Uh, number five, that any recommendations out of that, out of that water quality impact assessment be registered as part of a development agreement on the title of the property. And number six, that the applicant uh, submit to the township the transfer deed of land conveying the parcel. So, um, so that's pretty well sums it up. If there's any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thanks so much. Okay, um, you said Ivan that uh, the uh, owner was present. Is there a, does she wish to add anything to your comments? Good morning. Um, no, I think we were just here in, in case you had any questions or if we can help the process. Or... I'm here too. It's just, I'm not as good looking <laughs> as Chris when I take my hat off. I'm just sitting back. Um, no, is there any questions that we can help you with or any information? Well, we will turn it over then to the committee and see if they have any questions for you to answer. Uh, any questions from the committee? Councillor Olmstead. Well, not a question as much as a comment. At least I was brave enough to turn the camera on, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have a choice. You didn't have your better half with you. That's it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, just, just a question. Why, why, why didn't you pursue this back in 2007? Why did it just go stale? We did. And we got all the approvals. Everything was set. As you know, Mac had a couple health issues 
And um, between uh, that and lawyers, it just fell through the cracks. I, I'll take the blame on it. The, the one step that wasn't done, it wasn't taken in and registered. That day. Everything was completed. Everything. And I think, uh, I, I say First, it was a lawyer, but I, I'll take the blame. I didn't. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm surprised Connie just didn't blame you anyway. <laughs> I tried to be gentle. <laughs> I know the property well, uh, uh, committee. I know the property very well. I think it's a great use. There's there's tons of room over there. There's lots of room in front of these properties as well along the waterfront. So I, I fully support this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any more comments from uh, the committee, Carmen? No, none. All right. Then if you see no more, I have none. So uh, I will ask for a vote. All in favor? Carried. Carried. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you to the McNeils. <laughs> thank you. Thank Have you. a great day, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then we will move forward. And we'll go to 3.7. Yes, sorry, uh, that the township, oh, sorry, that the Committee of Adjustment for the Township of Whitewater Region approved consent application D10-170 for the property described as part lot 22, Ross, concession to Godfrey Road, subject to the conditions outlined in this report. And uh, Ivan, if you could fill us in, that would be great. Do we need a mover and seconder for the motion? Oh, or no? absolutely. Yeah, thank you, I, yeah, we do. I had a little bit of a lapse. Yeah. Do you have a mover and a seconder, Carmen? Councilor Mackay, Councilor Olmstead. Sorry about that, Ivan. That was my fault. Uh, Ivan, then now I can pass it over. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm not too, I don't know the, the formalities, but I, I just recognize that. But yeah, so the application submitted by Clarence Sabolski is the owner of the property uh, in question, described as part of Lot 22, Ross Concession 2. Property fronts on Calvin Road, but also fronts on Godfrey Road. Uh, it's sort of a corner lot that is uh, not, it's kind of an irregular shape, but is very wide and not extremely deep. Uh, represents the first severance from the original holding and back, dating back to 71. Uh, property would be more or less one and a half acres, frontage of 145 and depth of 32 or 59 at the, long, at the deeper portion. Um, the property is located within the hamlet of Haley Station and uh, should be sufficiently sized to provide for uh, water and wastewater, private on-site water and wastewater services. A few things to note, uh, properties in a rural uh, hamlet designation in the county OP, also in the, uh, in the environmental protection and open space zone, and I'll speak to that very shortly. Uh, there is an intermittent and permanent water course that run through the severed and retained land. Um, site alterations to the property for the for the future dwelling uh, will be able to comply with a 30 meter setback. Um, uh, with that being noted, though, because the property, maybe I'll speak to that here. So the property is almost entirely covered by an environmental protection zone for some reason. Uh, other than that, the property is in an open space zoning. I'm not sure why it's in those zones, but the, the zoning bylaw dates back to 1992. So there may have been a reason for that in the past, uh, but certainly uh, staff could see this property developed for residential purposes. With that being said, uh, the owner will have to apply for a zoning amendment to change the zoning uh, from EPOS to residential one or residential two or a residential zone for that matter. Uh, to support that zoning amendment, uh, staff are, are going to recommend that a condition be submitted, uh, a condition be required to do an environmental impact assessment. Uh, that'll get a professional or a bio, professional biologist on site to examine uh, the purpose and reason for that EP zone, and they will make recommendations whether or not that should be reduced in size and rezoned to residential. Uh, so staff are, are, are recommending that a rezoning uh, supported by an EIS uh, be submitted for the approval of this severance. Uh, I also speak to the potential sand and gravel deposits in the area. So this area is known uh, for having some mineral aggregates, some extract, some potential extractable aggregates. Uh, however, these fall outside of the 150 meters from the severed property. Uh, so it's not anticipated that this severance will uh, cause any undue a hardship for the extraction of that aggregate. So as a result, we're not requiring any uh, aggregate impact assessment uh, in this particular case. 
Uh, so moving down to the conditions. One and two, that surveying be submitted to the county and township. Number three, uh, that the owner provide favorable comments from the County of Renfrew Public Works and Engineering Department because it does front on Godfrey Road, which is a county road. Number four, that the Ontario Land Surveyor uh, determine the width of the road on Calvin Road. Uh, so that pertains to the township. Uh, number five, that the owner submit to the, town, to the township an environmental impact assessment uh, relating to the environmental protection zone and, and the impacts to that water, the, that water course, the intermittent water course and permanent water course. Uh, number six, that the owner enter into a development agreement, if required, uh, pertaining to that uh, EIS. So if there's any recommendations pertaining to the construction uh, to the EIS, uh, then those be formed part of a, a development agreement. Number seven, that an amendment to the zoning bylaw be submitted to the township to rezone the lands from OS and EP to residential. And number eight, that the uh, transfer deed of land be conveyed, uh, be submitted to the township for conveyance purposes. So staff are supportive. There is a bit of legwork to be done here, but uh, certainly uh, achievable uh, to allow for the developability of this lot. Thanks so much. Okay. Uh, is the owner present, Carmen? I don't believe so, but uh, I have one more person on. If, uh, if this is your application, do you want to unmute yourself? I don't think it is, so. Don't, no. don't think it is, Carmen? Okay, uh, any comments then from the committee? Councillor Olmstead? Uh, I, I know this property, so I, I'm, I'm surprised that it's zoned EP. Um, so maybe uh, number one, just, just to get a sense maybe from Ivan, and any ideas why maybe the old rail bed going through there or something that, that they, but typically is not zoned EP. And second part of that question is, uh, what is the process that uh, the applicant has to go through to change the zoning from an EP? Is, is that through us or is that through the ministry? Thank you. So the, the process for zoning will be through us. Um, and usually what I've seen in the past for the, uh, an example would be the block property on Cole Smith Road. The, the, the biologist would say, uh, you know, the water course, you know, is, is describes the water course. And um, essentially they would recommend the reduction of the EP zone uh, to something that's more suitable. So that zoning amendment would go to council uh, for the township. Um, and then to answer your first question, so I'm not entirely certain why it's, it's, uh, it's in the EP zone. Uh, it is an intermittent water course. That means that it probably dries up for most of the summer. Um, the water course appears to come from across the road. You can kind of see a bush, bushy area close to the road. So maybe that's kind of a little bit of a local wetland of sorts. And maybe that's the reason why it extends to the other side. But uh, I, I don't anticipate that a biologist would have any great issue uh, in, uh, in supporting a, a rezoning application and assessing the, the impacts on the environment. So yeah, it is showing a local wetland across the road. So it must, uh, go through a culvert under Calvin Road and then traverse into Mr. Sobolski's property and then go across the rail line and keep going uh, to another sort of pond area across uh, across Haley Road. But uh, but yeah, that's that basically answers that, I think. Thanks. Okay, uh, thank you, Carmen. Uh, does that answer your question, uh, Councillor Olmstead? Yeah, answers it perfectly. Thank you. No further questions. Okay. Okay, any other comments? Uh, I just have one. Ivan, I, I seen where you said that they had to have the, the correct distance on uh, Calvin Road, but did was there anything mentioned about the distance on Godfrey Road or is that just assumed? Is that for the road widening you're referring to? Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. So, so we circulate the County of Renfrew as part of our, uh, of our public notices before we come to the committee. Uh, we didn't receive any comments uh, before, the, before the committee meeting. However, um, I felt it might be necessary just to, to uh, have a condition that they get comments from the county. Uh, so the applicant will be required to seek out those comments and I have a contact person for that. Um, and if the county require road widening, then we would, it would just, become a, a condition within condition number three. Um, so it would just 
for me. No, you're, you're, you've answered my question. Yeah. As, long, as long as that condition is in the, in the uh, application, that's fine. Uh, I think I think that's great. That that was my only reason. Like I, I hadn't heard uh, that part of it, but uh, obviously you've uh, looked into it and dealing with it, so I'm good with it. Uh, then, uh, if no other questions, I will call for a vote. All in favor? Carried. Thank you, Carmen. And we'll move on to uh, 3.8. Minor variance application D thirteen one twenty five uh, thirty ninety five Grant Settlement Road. Carmen, can the you, recommendation uh, is the committee of adjustment approve the minor variance submitted for the property located at thirty ninety five Grant Settlement Road, uh, granting relief from section three point two four C I to reduce the minimum distance separation the MDS from one hundred ninety six meters. 280 meters between a manure storage area and the nearest dwelling. Mover and a second. Mover and a seconder, Carmen. Councilor Olmstead, Councilor McKay. Okay, uh, maybe I will uh, turn it over to Ivan. Yeah, thanks so much. So this is uh, one of the two variance applications, the two, one of the, the second last uh, report uh, before the committee today. Uh, so essentially what they're applying for, like uh, Carmen noted in the recommendation, is the reduction of the minimum distance separation, the MDS. So again, the MDS applies as sort of a tool from the Ministry of Agricultural, Food and Rural Affairs. Uh, the purpose of it is to try to reduce impacts between land uses, uh, in this case, agricultural and residential. Uh, so agricultural uses typically have a, a greater amount of noise, odors and dust and the like and they establish an MDS uh, to try to miti mitigate against those impacts. Uh, in the particular case, the manure storage that's located on Joseph and Jacinta's Selener's property, it was constructed uh, back in 2000 and, uh, uh, 2020, rather, uh, 2020. Um, when it was built, uh, they had thought that they had built it at a, at, a, at a proper distance to the adjacent dwelling, so it was clearly noted uh, as part of the building permit process that it had to be at least 196 meters. Uh, but following its construction, it was determined that it was in fact closer to the dwelling than, than the required amount. Uh, I will note that uh, CBO Schultz did visit the site. Uh, he did use a range finder and got about 186 meters uh, from the edge of that manure storage to the, um, to the nearest dwelling. Uh, so we're looking to reduce it uh, to 180 to give a bit of leeway just in case the number isn't, isn't exactly accurate. Uh, so when it comes to MDS variances, they're generally uh, not encouraged because of the impacts that, are, that, that, could, that, could be, uh, that could be sought as a result of the two, the two uses. Uh, however, in a very few cases, uh, they could be considered. Uh, in my uh, experience uh, with the township here, uh, there was only one other MDS variance that was applied for, and that was back in, uh, in, in March or April of 2019 when I first, first started. So in this case, uh, we reviewed the application and its merits against the four test of a minor variance. Uh, so as it pertains to the official plan, uh, the intent of the official plan is generally maintained. Uh, while the re reduced distance is proposed, um, it will allow for the continued use of an existing manure storage and uh, it will be still at a, at a pretty significant distance to the adjacent dwelling. Uh, we circulated the landowner of that dwelling. We have not heard back from them as part of our public consultation. So uh, we anticipate that there's no concerns with that reduction. Uh, number two, the zoning bylaw. So while the zoning bylaw establishes the MDS needs to be complied with, um, um, uh, in this particular case, it won't be complied with, but all the other setbacks are met, front yard setbacks, lock coverages, and the like. So, uh, so, so essentially the only reduction is, uh, is, the, is the MDS, it generally meets the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. Uh, while the variance is deemed minor, so it's just a reduction of more or less 10 meters. In fact, it's, uh, um, in fact it's, it's, it's noted as 16, but it'll be more or less 10 meters. So again, there'll be minimal change in the two uses. This, I mean, your storage has existed for a, a full year or longer, uh, and we've received no concerns relating to order uh, as a pertains to that specific manure storage or others in that, in that 
general area. So we have received no concerns from the landowners. And fourthly, um, this, you know, the, the, the allowance to expand in agricultural use is generally supported in our township. That's one of our main industries in the community. Um, so this will provide for the highest and best use of the land and will allow for that manure storage to continue to exist. Uh, so staff are supportive of this. We've not received any comments uh, as part of our public consultation process. Uh, so we're just looking for uh, the committee's uh, acceptance of this application. Thanks so much. Hey, Carmen, do you see the applicant in, in the audience? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. No. No? All right, then I will move to the committee. Any comments from the committee? That's some kind. Yeah, what, are the, what does the farmer think about that? Is that his dwelling going to be put down there or what is... No, it's it's privately owned. Like that other little lot, basically the 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 nearest dwelling is just to the south there. It's that sort of half acre or one acre property. Yeah, uh, they were circulated the notice, and we didn't hear back from them. So they've had ample opportunities to provide comments, and we didn't we didn't get any comments. So, all right, good enough for me. Thank you. Hey, do I see any other comments? If not, yeah, no. we'll we'll call for a vote, Carmen. Yep. All okay. in favor? All in yep. favor? Motion is carried. Okay, we'll move on to oh, we're three point nine minor variance application D thirteen one twenty six thirty one. Now, Lane. Okay. Canal Lane. Canal Lane. And uh, recommendation. Read the recommendation. Yeah. That the Committee of Adjustment approve a minor variance submitted for the property at 31 Canal Lane for the purposes of permitting the construction of a single detached dwelling granting relief from section 8.2 to reduce the interior side yard to 1.5, sorry, the interior side yard width to 1.5 meters, reduce the minimum rear yard depth to 4.5 meters and permit the current location of the existing accessory structure within the minimum front yard depth and side yard width. Mover. Mover and a seconder, Carmen. Councillor Olmstead, Councillor Mackay. Okay, then I will turn it over to Ivan for comments. Yeah, thanks so much. So we do have uh, Mark and Shauna with us today. Uh, they're 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 available for any questions if we have any, or to voice any any comments they wish to do. Uh, so essentially, the property in question is on Canal Lane. It's a private road that extends off of Rafting Rafting Road and Harmony Bay Lane. Uh, it's directly adjacent to the uh, the former Wilderness Tours and the Owl Rafting. So there's a little bit of a residential area between those two developments. Um, the property in question is of an irregular shape. Um, the owners are looking to construct a seasonal dwelling, having a lot coverage of 840 square feet. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I understand it as being a two-story structure. So it's larger than 840, but the coverage on the ground is 840 square feet. A um, few things to note is while they are proposing to reduce the setbacks, uh, they will continue to conform with the minimum 20 meter water setback. So at the back of the lot, we're reducing it, the proposals to reduce it down to four and a half meters. So rear yard depth is opposite to the front. The front is where Canal Lane is and the rear is at the opposite side of it. You see the land behind there. Uh, I believe that's held by OPG and there's still gonna be 20 meters. Uh, they're still gonna comply with the 20 meter water setback. Uh, that is necessary there. So there's extra land behind uh, the lot. Um, so the property is quite small. It's only 0.15 acres. Uh, it has a frontage of 31 or 10 meters and a depth of 31 or 33 meters. Uh, properties in the waterfront designation in the county OP. Uh, properties in a limited service residential zone in our zoning bio. Limited service residential typically applies to private roads in the uh, former Ross Township. Um, and if you, uh, I'll just go through the uh, the analysis here, but um, 
The, the, the limited service residential zone requires seven and a half meters at the rear and the front and three meters on both sides. Uh, so here the reduction is from 7.5 to four and a half at the back and from three meters to one and a half on the sides. Um, all right. So the general intent and purpose of the official plan is maintained. The proposed use is residential. The property is designated as waterfront and as a result allows for waterfront residential uses. So it is maintaining the official plan's intent. Uh, so the general intent of the zoning bylaw is maintained. So while, the other while they are proposing to reduce some setback, uh, the present application will pr permit the desired structure. Uh, on a very irregular shaped property and will retain sufficient setbacks to reduce any impacts to the adjacent landowners. So again, there'll be five feet on both sides minimum. In fact, five feet on one side and, and much greater than five feet on the other side. Uh, so there, we're not anticipating any huge impacts to the adjacent landowners. Uh, one th thing to note too is the applicant has been working with McGregor's and our chief building official, Doug Schultz, uh, to determine the proper placement of the septic system due to the size of the, of the lot. Uh, that has proven to be difficult, but uh, certainly something that they could achieve. Uh, so they're currently working with a designer and our building services to uh, properly locate a septic uh, in addition to the proposed dwelling. Um, so the variance is minor. So while they are seeking relief, um, there will be ample space around the property uh, to provide for rec passive recreational uses as well as for emergency access for, for, for emergency services. Uh, so in the case where an ambulance has to get, or an ambulance has to, not the vehicle, but the services have to get to the back of the property, there's five feet still, uh, which is ample space to get to the back and more on the other side of the property. A uh, key thing to note again, the minimum water setback will be maintained. Um, and lastly, so the, the, the proposed use of land uh, is desirable for appropriate development. So again, the uh, residential, this is property is intended for residential uses. It was created a number of years ago. And as a result, the size of it is proving to be a constraint today. Uh, so the minor variance will assure that the applicant can obtain their desired development and will provide again, best use of land. Uh, building permits will be required for the new structures and uh, they'll have to make sure that the site grading does not grade land, uh, water to the adjacent landowners. So they'll have to ensure that proper drainage is in place to ensure that they don't affect the adjacent landowners. Uh, maybe one last thing to know, that's what I was thinking of, is that small shed. So there's an existing small shed on the property. Uh, it's near Canal Lane. It's within the minimum front yard setback. Uh, that's not allowed, uh, but it's an existing shed. And this application is, is merely to recognize the existing shed, the non-conforming existing shed. So uh, the applicants in consultation with myself decided to include that in the application. So it's it's part of the application, but it already exists and will continue to exist uh, uh, until they decide to <clears throat> remove it or relocate it. So staff are supportive uh, and we're just looking for uh, council's uh, committee's consideration. Thanks so much. Hey, does, uh, do we have the applicant uh, in, just in the audience? Does Do they wish to speak on this? Um, hello, good, good morning. Good morning. Um, does anybody have any questions? We, um, again, we've worked with the uh, McGregor's and we talked to the building inspector and uh, we'll, if this is approved, we'll be able to uh, put the cottage on there. And I just want to mention that um, the back, the towards the river, I get my fronts and backs mixed up, the back towards the river, it's only the left uh, corner of the cottage that would actually um, stick out further because of the size of the lot and the location of it. It's just it's just a little bit <laughs> that um, is going to uh, to need the extra. So um, I don't know. Does anybody have any questions? I'll turn it over to the committee then, uh, Shauna, uh, and see if there's any questions that need to be directed to you. Okay, it's okay. it's both, it's just so that we need room for the septic system at the back. There is an existing septic system there from my parents' older cottage, um, but it's not sufficient. So we need to update it, and there is no we couldn't find any um, uh, permit for the 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 septic system and the tank and whatnot that's there. So we need to update it to today's a uh, code, and in order to do that, um, we need. To, to move the building ahead a little, well, 
the back towards the river in order to give us room to put a proper septic system um, on, on that other side of it. So that's why our application is so that we can, we can make it proper. We appreciate that. I'm going to ask the committee if there's any questions. Carmen, do you see anybody with any questions? I see none. Okay, I, I only have one uh, and uh, I don't know whether it goes to Shauna or goes to Ivan, but the, the lot is sufficient. We, we can put a well and a septic on this, this lot. Yes. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Shauna. Oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, yes, we did have, we had uh, when uh, Marty with from McGregor's was out, um, we had him out a couple of times actually, and we did all the measurements. There is a, um, my mom and dad had a, a well on it. It was a, a dug well. Uh, we're going to uh, put in a new drilled well. And yes, there is um, space. Um, we're going to put it anyway on the corner and it'll be fine it'll be on our property it's not going to be in within any there's no problem <laughs> i guess hey, no no as long, long as shauna it's there and it, it meets the uh <clears throat> the distance that we have to have that's fine I, and other than that i i like the idea that you're going to to upgrade it that so that that's the part i think is is great to see you upgrading it uh, I have no other comments, and I don't think there was any comments from the the committee. Councillor Olmsted, okay. sorry, sorry, Chair, for Chair. Did you have something to add, Councillor Olmsted? Yeah, the only thing I was going to add again, I, I know I know these properties uh, very well. Um, um, I know the Curries are down there, along with uh, I know the Owl property uh, very well. Um, yeah, and given given the we're only seeing on the screen here the size of the actual lot, but as uh, as Ivan said, you know, there's, there's to the I guess on the north side, yeah, that side up there, there's tons of room that uh, that that is not showing as, as being part of the lot. So I, again, I, I fully support uh, this recommendation. Thank you. Okay, seeing no other. Uh, one question, Ivan, it, it has it, this has obviously been circulated to the adjacent landowners, is that correct? Or does that happen? That's, that's occurred. So yeah, so adjacent landowners received a notice uh, in, uh, in uh, mid January, and which is the requirements 10 days before, I think it was sent out, you know, about 14 days before the meeting. So they've had opportunity to comment. We haven't received any comments. Okay, no, that, that answers my question. I just wanted to make sure that, that that part had been done and I was sure it would be. Anyway, then uh, if that's all, um, I will call for a vote. All in favor? Carried. Carried. Listen, thank you, Shauna uh, and Mark. We appreciate it and uh, good luck. Thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll just move ahead then. Uh, I guess the next thing, uh, Carmen, is uh, the uh, approval of the minutes mm -hmm. from the December 16th. Yep. And the recommendation is that the Committee of Adjustment of the Township of Whitewater Region approve the December 16th minutes, uh, 2021 minutes. That's it. Mover and a seconder. Yep. Sorry, mover and seconder. Okay. Councilor Mackay, Councilor Olmsted. Okay. And that's it. Adjournment. And, and then uh, a call for a vote, Carmen. You got oh, it. Oh, yeah, vote? please. Yeah, I'm jumping the gun. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. <laughs> uh, so, all in favor, thank you. Okay, Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Carmen, well, before we leave, uh, the only thing I ask is that. Uh, in that application uh, that uh, Councillor Mackay's, will that be noted in the minutes? Okay. In there. Oh, sorry, it's in there. I put it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other than that, thank you very much. Hey, Carmen. I'll, I'll take half the blame for that this morning because I, I thought when I saw the, uh, 
Yeah, the meeting yeah. notice come out. I thought, well, they're always ten o'clock, but maybe there's a reason why it's at ten thirty. So no, you can't take the blame. It was totally me. I I did have no, ten thirty uh, on no, that. Let him take the blame. Oh, okay. Well, all right. right. He, yeah, he wants to see it. Yeah, sure. I want to see yeah. you take the blame, Homestead. All right, take the blame for a lot of things, buddy. You yeah. never know. <laughs> <laughs> That's just part of it. You just have to shrug it off and move on. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Listen. Thank you, guys. Appreciate okay, it. thank you. If I could, yeah, if I could just, okay. sorry, if I could just interject real quick, if you don't.